Let's light up our scenes in 2D by using the Universal Render Pipeline. Alright, we find ourselves back in Unity once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be using the Universal Render Pipeline to get some light into our 2D scene. Now, for this, I have already created a 2D scene that you can actually download in this exact format. In the description below, there's a Unity package available for download, so you basically start with the exact same setup. Now you can see when I actually start the scene, we have some pretty cool stuff already over here. We got some flying fire over here that is, you know, supposed to light up the scene a little bit. Otherwise, there's nothing really happening. And it already, to be fair, looks really freaking cool. But we can turn this up to about 11 by basically adding some lighting effects to this and then, you know, going even deeper. So let's take a look. Now, because this is a normal 2D project that we've created here and that we have in this case, the Universal Render Pipeline or URP is actually not per default enabled. And as a complete first step, we have to add the URP to our project itself. To even enable that, we're going to go to Window Package Manager and it might end up somewhere over here. And what we want to do is we want to go to Packages Unity Registry and then search for Universal. And at that point, we'll already get it. Un Universal RP is what we want. That is from Unity Technologies themselves. So we're going to install that. That's going to take anywhere from, you know, a couple of seconds to maybe a minute or so until it is fully installed. It's basically downloading all of the different scripts and packages and all of that that we're going to need to actually use the Universal Render Pipeline here. And basically the Universal Render Pipeline, you can probably do about a thousand things with that and probably spend hours upon hours just looking at everything that you can do. We're going to take this piece by piece, bit by bit. And in this case, we're just going to add a normal light in 2D, which doesn't work without basically using the Universal Render Pipeline or some weird workarounds, but the URP is basically the way to go. And now it's added and we can close this and we can continue. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to add in our assets folder. I'm just going to add a new folder right here. I'm going to call this the rendering folder. This is not strictly necessary. I like to keep a tidy assets folder. Now inside of there, we'll right click and create another at the very bottom here, rendering. And what we want to create is we want to create a URP asset with a 2D renderer. So we're going to click this and we're going to call this the URP-2D or something like that. That's, you can call that whatever you want. And another object will appear called the URP-2D underscore renderer. So that is the renderer associated with this particular URP asset. Now here you can already change a bunch of things. In our case, we actually don't want to touch any of this at all right now. What we now want to do is we want to go to edit, to project settings. And in graphics, you can already see that we basically can add some settings right here. And if I click on this, you can see I can now choose my URP 2D asset right here. I'm going to double click this. I'm going to take continue and it's basically going to import more things over here. That's quite important. And then down here, we even have another global settings, which it should already have created. So at the very bottom over here, you can see we have the universal render pipeline global settings. I'm just going to add this to my rendering folder here as well. This is once again, not strictly necessary, but it's kind of nice. And now everything is added that we need. So now in the hierarchy, I can right click, I can go to lights and you can see I have 2D lights now available, which weren't available before. Pretty awesome. So if I were to now take a spotlight, for example, and I add it, you can see hmm, it doesn't really do anything, does it? Like whatever intensity I put in here, whatever color I change it to, nothing really happens. And that is because all of these sprites that we have currently are not actually laid out for the universal render pipeline to sort of receive light. The way that you can check this is pretty easy, actually. You can basically go in here and you can see the material right here is sprites default. This is the default sprite material. And what we actually want to do is once again, click on this little button over here. And what you will find is that there's quite a few different ones. However, the one we actually need is hidden over here. So you want to actually toggle this and all of a sudden you get a, uh, I mean, way more as you can clearly see. And what you can do is you can search for sprite dash lit. And that is the one you want to take. And what you will actually immediately find is if I just select this, it's going to change to this material. And we basically want to do this, well, for everything. So we're going to do this for all of our fire over here. This is the sprite lit. For the tile map, we do the same thing in the material right here. Sprite lit. And for all of our backgrounds, the same thing. All right, we can save and I can right click now and let's add the light over here now. Let's, for example, once again, add a spotlight. And the first thing you'll find is, oh no, everything has reloaded now. This is one thing that you have to keep in mind as well. So sometimes what happens is that the preview right here takes a moment to reload. So you can see, even though we changed all of this, maybe for you, each one of your textures individually already went completely black. And if I were to look in the game, you can see there's a little bit of light here, but you know, let's not worry about that right now. But you can see everything is dark right now, or everything is black, basically pitch black, because everything is dark. We don't have any light in the scene. 
And what we can do is we can we can take this light though, and you can see we can add some light over here. This already adds a pretty cool effect. If I were to, you know, just duplicate this and add us to all of the different lights over here, and I were to now start the scene, obviously it's a little bit ridiculous, but you can see this looks pretty freaking cool, right? Like if that's was if this was like sort of an effect you were going for, all of a sudden you have a pretty cool scene over here already, just with a couple of 2D lights and basically changing all of this to the universal render pipeline. What we can do as well is we can add a global light and that's going to illuminate everything. Now this is going to be the global light. Let's just call this global light. There you go. And maybe we want to turn down the, the intensity by quite a bit. And maybe we even want to change the color, right? You can see the color of the moon sort of is like violet or, or sort of a dark purple, right? So we can just tint everything in sort of a violet purple or something like that. And you can see now with the global light, if I were to go in now, you can see now we get some pretty crazy atmosphere. And of course, we can still change the lights over here as well. We can change their intensity, which is going to, well, basically make this like way more intense. We can also turn off at the top right over here the gizmos so we can see this a little bit better. So the intensity, we can also both an inner radius as well as an outer radius. So that basically determines how much smoothing there is on the circle over here. So let's say, for example, you can see the outer radius. I can just basically increase this. And we can also, we also have some fall off strength, basically doing a similar thing to the inner and outer radius over here. So we can do something like this, maybe a little bit more, way less intensity over here. There you go. I think that that's okay. And rather, I want to make this like a little bit bigger and a little less fall off, and maybe a little bit smaller again. So you definitely want to play around with this a little bit in terms of what the numbers are, what you want to do and stuff like that. But that sounds pretty good. Now, the fire is more yellow, right? So let's actually tint everything uh, in a yellowish tint. And all of a sudden, bam, we have that. We can actually delete the other two lights and let's actually add them again. And let's get them to the other two fires here as well. And all of a sudden, we have a pretty cool illuminated scene. Now, one thing you might notice is if I turn the lights on and off, the background, right? So these are mountains in the background and even the sort of sky in the background they all get illuminated as well. That's a little bit weird, right? When you think about it, like this tiny of a light would not shine brightly at the background, right? That makes no sense at all. So how can we fix this? Well, we can fix this with the sorting layers. So this is going to be a really freaking cool thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Gothic background. That's the complete background image. And I'm going to go to the layer, add layer. And then instead of adding something in the layers, I'm going to add something in the sorting layers. So this, for example, is going to be background two. So the higher the layer, the further away it is actually. So that's actually a very important thing. So this would be the furthest away background. I'm going to do a background dash one. Then I'm going to do a foreground dash one. And then I'm going to do a foreground dash two. So that's going to be enough layers for me to basically play around with this. The gothic background is now going to get this layer. In the sprite renderer, you can basically add the sorting layer. This is going to be background two. And you can see it all of a sudden moves to the front. This is once again because of the sorting layer. The default is above. So the default would be the layer at the very end. It's it's kind of weird. Then both of the mountains here are going to get background one. And you can see now they move on top of them. And now the order continues. So then this is foreground one. And then the tile map would be in this case foreground two. Uh, similar with the fires. The fires are also all foreground two. Awesome. So now basically everything is set up again properly, but now they are all separated in different layers. So right now the light over here actually still illuminates everything, but if I were to change it to, for example, nothing over here, then of course there's no light anymore. And if I then say we want foreground one and foreground two over here, sometimes, as I've said, this doesn't update immediately. So if I were to play, then it should illuminate this, but not the background. And now it should also be shown inside of the scene view. Sometimes it doesn't update immediately. I'm unsure why this is, but there you go. So for example, if I take it away, I believe that that works better if I add it later. So that's the idea. So basically, you know, taking it away and then adding it again sometimes adds some weird stuff, but that is the idea. And you can see here again, if I do nothing and then add the foreground in the foreground one. This actually updates immediately. And there you go. The background now no longer added, but now we can say, well, wait a second. Why don't I use the global illumination to only light up the background instead of the foreground? So now I can basically toggle this and look at this. Now I only toggle the background with the with the with the global light over here and I can do some pretty freaking cool effects. And this would be the finished scene in this case. 
I think that is a pretty cool thing. And also what's awesome is because you now can play around with the intensity over here and all of this works totally fine during gameplay, we can change things like this, like the intensity, the color, the radius, all of that. We could change all of this via scripts and we can make this even more dynamic, like add some flickering lights, add maybe the moon glinting or something like that. It can all be added in theory. But we're not going to refine it right now, but refining is the correct word because in this tutorial right here, we're going to add a post-processing effect such as Bloom, which is going to make emissive textures. Hope to see you in that video. So, yeah.